Today I'm gonna to be talking about how I made this whimsy coat, which is this white floor length coat that I'm wearing on top of my dress. Warning, this is not the most straightforward way to make a whimsy coat, but let's go ahead and dive into it. So after turning a set of curtains into the dress that you saw me wearing in the first clip, I had the lining fabric that I still needed to do something with. My first thought was making a dress out of this white fabric to go under some of my other apron dresses. So I used my blue gourd underdress or overdress as a pattern and was tracing it onto the fabric basically to get an idea of what my size needed to be. Now, a couple things I didn't take into account were that the two fabric types were completely different. The blue is a sort of linen. It was originally a bed sheet, and this white fabric is almost like a low pile velvet. The other thing I didn't take into consideration is that I really thought that I was adding in seam allowance and a lot of um, room for error when I was making a pattern out of my blue dress, but there is little to no stretch in this white fabric. What you see here is me beginning to sew the side seams on the white dress and then cutting out the sleeves for this original, what's supposed to be a gourd overdress pattern. One of the things that I learned from this the hard way is that even if you already have a dress made, maybe just worth taking measurements and redrawing the pattern every time because I used the blue dress as my pattern and my reference and um, well, it just didn't fit very well. Here I'm putting the sleeves together for the first time, sewing those into the dress. Again, not really knowing if it was gonna fit or not. Trying it on for the first time, clearly it was not working. It was way too tight in the bust. I did not think I was gonna be able to get it on and off. So I ended up cutting it off of me. Now, disclaimer, do not try this at home. It was very difficult and I ended up needing help to get cut out of this dress. Eventually, I made my way out of it with a giant slit down the middle. Despite cutting myself out of the dress, the tension of the sleeves, literally just raising my arms overhead, was too much for this fabric to handle. It would literally just rip apart at all of the seams. Here, when I'm trying it on, kind of looking like a lab coat for the first time, was actually when I ripped holes in the armpits where the sleeves were sewn into each other. It was at this point that I put this project down for something like two months before I picked it up again. Here you can see the giant hole in the armpit that I was talking about. I started off by going ahead and removing the sleeves from the dress body. Clearly, this dress could not really handle tension being pulled in multiple directions, and since arms can move in like 360 degrees, I just knew that sleeves were not gonna work for this dress. The one place that I did not have any seams ripping were the gores, so I felt confident that this dress could tolerate the gores. And I'm still calling it a dress, but really at this point, I had the idea for a whimsy coat, and was sewing the two additional gores in place just to give it a fuller skirt around the bottom. My machine has a Greek key detailing and I decided to just test that out on some of the excess fabric, see how I liked it. With this detail, the machine really has to feed itself through using the presser foot and just, you know, the, the feeders on the bottom side of the machine. So my biggest job was making sure that the weight of the garment didn't mess up the pull of the fabric. I decided to basically hem the inside seam closures using this Greek key detailing, which is why I flipped the half inch to the inside of the dress and pinned in place making sure to remove my pins before the presser foot got on top of them so that it didn't mess up the, the Greek key design. This is what it looked like when it was done, and honestly, I love the details. Then it was time to adjust the hem. The skirt as is was brushing the floor, and the whimsy coat starts a little bit higher in the front, a little bit lower in the back. This is me trying it on with just one side hemmed so far. Well, not really hemmed, but finished with that great key detailing. 
I loved it so much that I knew that I wanted to do more of it. So I pinned the other side of the coat in place and went ahead and did the Greek key detailing all the way up the other side. I liked the holes that were kind of existent from when I was trying on and messing up when this garment when it was still a dress because I felt like it added character and made this garment look like it had been worn and was not brand new. The LARP that I'm planning on using this for is takes place in a battlefield setting, so it just made more sense to have a little bit of wear and tear on this garment. I guess the moral of this story is if you want to make a whimsy coat, you can use a gourd overdress pattern, but go ahead and cut a line down the middle and then adjust your hem to start higher in the front and lower in the back. This was not the most technical of tutorials for my medieval clothing series. However, I love how this whimsy coat turned out and the details are just so fun. Goes to show that even the worst of mistakes can be salvaged and turned into a piece that you really love. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.